You know, there was a time when Don Lemon suggested that the missing Malaysian airplane may have been swallowed by a black hole. I'm not making this up. How's it going, everybody? Today, I want to talk about James O'Keefe and Project Veritas. Over the past several days, they have been putting out videos that are going after CNN. And James O'Keefe said a little while ago that his next big target was going to be the mainstream media. And now we're seeing undercover recordings of people associated with or working at CNN. And it's pretty interesting. The first video we saw was from a guy named John Bonifield, who is a supervising producer on the medical team for CNN in Atlanta. And he talks about how the Trump-Russia thing is mostly bullshit. That's what he said. It's, quote, mostly bullshit. That there's not a whole lot of evidence. And when asked why CNN is then pushing the story, as the guy actually says, is why is CNN always Russia this, Russia that? John Bonifield responds, it, because it's ratings. Because their ratings are great right now. And that's true. Cable news ratings are way up. The next video they put out is about Van Jones. Now, Van Jones has been critical of the Trump-Russia connection on TV. But in this hidden recording, when someone asks him, What's hap what do you think is going to happen this week with the Russia thing? Van Jones says, the Russia thing is a big nothing burger. And then finally, we have a video from an associate producer named Jimmy Carr, who says that American voters are stupid as shit, and that Kellyanne Conway looks like she got hit by a shovel. So the first thing I want to do, uh, the, the point of this video is to have uh, a bit of a critical analysis of James O'Keefe's project, the things they've come out with so far. So first. I want to address something that's really interesting. See, look, when I, I was originally planning on doing this video, I was having a conversation with a friend about what we find interesting about the, the O'Keefe videos, Project Veritas, what we think is good, what we think is bad. So I wanted to critically look at what they've done. I went to James O'Keefe's YouTube page, Veritas Visuals, to see their videos, and sure enough, James has a video rebuttal for the Washington Post. See, the Washington Post has an article where they say that what O'Keefe leaves out could be as important as what is left in. He says that James O'Keefe does not disclose that John Bonifield is from Atlanta and on the medical team. He's questioning why someone on the medical team's opinion would even be relevant, and because he's from Atlanta and not in New York or Washington where they're doing more foreign policy and investigative work, is his opinion even relevant? Here's the thing. The first thing James O'Keefe says is that he wants to introduce you to John Bonifield, supervising producer in Atlanta. So the Washington Post got that wrong. That's one of the core issues brought up by the Washington Post, and it was wrong. So in this video rebuttal that James O'Keefe does, he allegedly, he calls this journalist from the Washington Post, I say allegedly because I don't know if he actually called the journalist, but in their video they, they say they do, you hear the recording, and he tells the Post reporter, fix this. You made a mistake and you need to retract this because it is wrong. And the person we hear on the phone, who we can assume is the reporter from the Washington Post, says he'll look into it and then if they were wrong, they were wrong and they'll fix it. So I saw that and I laughed uh, because I feel like James is kind of like playing up this fake news thing and it's kind of funny and then sure enough, after the phone call, you see James walk over to the wall of retractions where they've got a bunch of news articles uh, that have that had, uh, news, uh, news companies that have retracted stories about James O'Keefe. And he says, when the Washington Post retracts this, we're going to frame it and put it on the wall. Uh, and I find that funny. I mean, it's just a bunch of drama. Is it really valuable information? I don't know. But guess what? I go to the Washington Post, and it's several days after. Th this article was written several days ago. And so I'm thinking, I'm thinking, you know what? They've probably fixed the article by now. Yeah, of course they didn't. The article still incorrectly states that James O'Keefe did not disclose this producer was in Atlanta. I'm trying to take a critical look at what James O'Keefe is doing, playing devil's advocate and saying, let's, you know, let's poke some holes in what they're doing so that we can be right. If you look, it doesn't matter if James O'Keefe is right or James O'Keefe is right or wrong, it doesn't matter if the videos are valuable or not, it matters what what value can we extract from them. So let's be critical of them and then figure out what where the real value is. But sure enough, the Washington Post is just throwing fuel on the fire by having an incorrect statement in their article about James O'Keefe. The Washington Post is not on my good list, 
right now. If you were to ask me now my opinion, I'm probably not gonna use them as a source anymore. They did a story not too long ago I talked about where they said that Kim.com was allegedly trying to fabricate an archive of emails to prove the Seth, Seth Rich conspiracy and that's just, that was literally made up, which blew my mind. I was like, that's, someone sat down, made that up, there's no evidence, literally none, and they published it in the Washington Post. That's fake news. I know fake news gets tossed around, you know, all the time, but that literally was fake news. And now we're seeing this Washington Post article where they know that James O'Keefe did disclose this, and they didn't fix it several days later. When I look at someone like John Bonifield, who says it's just ratings, we're looking at somebody who is in an office at CNN, okay? There's an old saying that we are the summation of the five people who surround us. I wonder where John Bonifield gets his opinion about what CNN is doing. Well, yes, he's not working on these teams in New York and Washington, he's on the medical team, but surely he is surrounded by CNN staffers, so you have to assume that his opinions, these things he's saying openly and candidly at, at lunch and, and in the office, are not controversial. He's not saying anything that's gonna piss anybody off, right? And the same thing about this associate producer, Jimmy Carr. He's saying very aggressive things. American voters are stupid, we all think Trump is crazy, and you have to wonder where he gets his opinion. And the Van Jones thing, where he says the Russia story is a big nothing burger. Now, the guy working for Project Veritas asks him, what do you think about Russia, the Russia story this week, okay? And so people have brought up, hey, Van Jones could be saying the Russia thing this week is a whole nothing burger. Well, there's a couple problems with that. We don't know when this video was shot and what, what this week refers to. So it may have turned out to be a real nothing burger and Van Jones could have legitimately been saying this story this week is nothing. But here's where this leads us. You've got a supervising producer, you've got an associate producer, and Van Jones, whether or not he's talking about one specific aspect of the Trump Russia story or the whole thing, at some point, these people did not have confidence in what CNN was reporting. If your own staff isn't confident in the work you're doing, why do you expect me to be? News is about trust. And again, if there are staff members at your office from the lowest, an associate producer, to the highest, to an on-air commentator, and you don't have their confidence, you expect me to? But you know what? None of this matters. I don't need to watch Project Veritas videos to figure out whether or not I trust CNN or not. Because you know what? I do not trust CNN at all. There's a difference between a newspaper and a cable news network. Cable news networks are looking for ratings. Sure, newspapers are looking for viewers, but there's a lot of newspapers that operate off of subscriptions, meaning, just like me and my Patreon subscribers, we don't have to worry about getting a ton of views, we just have to worry about making sure we provide a quality product for the people who consume what we do. A lot of newspapers get things wrong. The Washington Post is not on my trust list at the moment, but neither is CNN, because they're ratings driven. But I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what, you know, there was a time when Don Lemon suggested that the missing Malaysian airplane may have been swallowed by a black hole. I'm not making this up. I think it's funny that there's even a conversation about whether or not to trust CNN when one of their lead anchors actually on television with a panel suggested a plane was swallowed by a black hole. Seriously. And then the guest goes on to say that something stupid like even a small black hole could swallow the whole universe. Wow. CNN lost me that moment. I sat there and I said, wow, that is plum nuts. Look, it's one thing if you make up a story about Kim.com hacking something. At least that's believable, that, that's based in reality. But to go on CNN on national, international television and say, could a black hole swallow this plane? You lost me. I don't, I don't know how they could have that guy on TV and expect to retain any shred of credibility because as far as I'm concerned, no way. I don't have a lot of trust in CNN and it doesn't matter what Veritas comes out with, they're never getting it back, okay? So, you know what, I take that back. No, they can get it back. Once they remove the black hole airplane guy, Don Lemon. Yeah, get rid of him and I'll consider actually believing anything you guys say. But till then, who knows what's coming next. 
James O'Keefe said something about seeing you after the holidays, so I guess we'll see his next video when it comes. I guess the last thing I should say is there have been criticisms of what they're doing, saying that when he chased down James O'Keefe, when he, when he, the clip from Van Jones, they're not very substantive. But in my opinion, while I agree, it is not very substantive what, what they've put out uh, so far, some of it is, I think James is trying to draw out responses from CNN to back them into a corner. I don't know what they've got on tape, but it seems like James O'Keefe and Project Veritas definitely have some more information, some more videos that they're going to release. And by slow rolling it, they put pressure on CNN to make statements, issue retractions, etc. And then, depending on what James O'Keefe has, they can respond and make CNN look worse. So I've got no personal beef with CNN. I know some of the people who work there. And I don't think every journalist is evil. I don't think all these reporters are evil. I just think it's a business. And I think they want ratings. And if that means they're going to go on TV and say a black hole may have swallowed an airplane, sure, they'll do it. That also means there's really important information in this world that you need, and they're not going to be the ones to give it to you. What do you think? Comment below. Click the like button. We'll keep the conversation going. I know, you know, I'm really critical of the media because this stuff keeps happening. And I guess it is what it is. But what do you think? New videos every day at 4 p.m. You can follow me on Twitter at TimCast. If you want to support the work that I do, go to patreon.com forward slash TimCast. Give whatever you can or nothing at all. My videos will always be free and available. Thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you tomorrow.